Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Travel Without a Cause. This is Matt, and today I have a slightly rainy and drizzly one for you. We're going to be learning all about St. John Cathedral Catholic Church here in Lafayette, Louisiana. It's a very old church at that. It's about 200 years old as a whole. Not this structure that you're going to see today, but it's been through many structures over the years. I'm going to tell you all about it. Uh, the history of the place is fascinating. Um, very cultural here to this area and uh, I'm also going to show you the inside of the church briefly uh, there's, there's a mass today at five o'clock uh, which is about maybe an hour from now so I'm not going to be too uh, rambunctious and, and loud in there I'm going to try to keep it quiet but uh, also I'm going to show you the grounds around the church and uh, there's also an oak tree a live oak tree that's one of the largest live oak trees in the United States and it's beautiful and it stands right next to the church and uh, so I'll show you all that stuff and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe, please, and share it if you like it and comment and all that stuff. And without further ado, here we go. In a beautiful downtown Lafayette, Louisiana. So yeah, here she is, folks. St. John Cathedral here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Such a beautiful structure indeed, including the surrounding property. Just full of beauty and history. And I'm about to tell you all about it. And uh, trying to keep my umbrella out of the picture here. It's been drizzly all day today. Nothing really heavy, but uh, just enough. That I brought my umbrella with me because I didn't want to get the camera all wet. Now as you see here is this giant oak tree that stands to the right of the church. It's quite large and you can see, see if I can zoom in here a little bit, you can see some joists holding up the tree branches and how big that trunk is on it. Well, just in time for the church bells. There's a placard over here that tells you all about the tree and how old it is. And I won't spoil it until we get there. I'll just let you look at it for a second. Kind of walk by it and take in all of its beauty. And I'll wait for the church bells to end before I start narrating here. And here we go, here it is. So the tree, one of the largest live oak trees in the United States, is estimated to be almost 500 years old. It was a large tree in 1800 when the property was donated to the Catholic Church. The tree recorded in 1812 as a surveyor's section corner marker and the growth calculated from the cores removed from the tree. The diameter of the trunk is nine feet two inches and the circumference is 28 feet 9 inches. It stands 126 feet high with an average spread of 138 feet. The large limb extended in a southeasterly direction has been computed by engineering consultants to weigh 72 tons. So, southeast, I don't know, southeast, where are we facing right now? I'd say that's probably the one that's right in front of us right here with the joist holding it up. Right here in front of us. 72 tons. That's crazy. Here's another placard. This one's for the church and it's all in French. I'm not even going to try to read that. Although I could read it. But I'm sure my accent would just destroy it. And I'm not trying to do all that today. Uh, but yeah. So I'm going to tell you a little about a little history about the church. And um, like I said, hopefully we can get inside. 
and show you a little bit about it. I'm sure they'll let me go inside. I, I mean, it's Catholic churches are usually pretty open all the time, so uh, I don't want to be too invasive. You know, it's Sunday. I want to be respectful for sure. But maybe just to catch a, a little bit of video in there, just kind of give you guys an idea of what it looks like. So yeah, dating back to about the mid 18th century, around the eight, uh, sorry the 1750s, the Catholic Church as a whole in the state of Louisiana was starting to be established. Uh, there was two specific parishes, areas I guess you could call them, that were the first two, two areas, or like I said, to be established for the Catholic Church. And I mean parishes as in, you know, Catholic Church parishes, not Louisiana counties that are called parishes. Um, and one of those was called uh, La Poste des Apollosis in 1776. And there's actually another one um, called St. Martin Post de Atacapaz, which is uh, obviously one of the Indian American Indian tribes or Native Americans, I should say, tribes back then in the area. And that was in 1756. Um, and... This area, Lafayette, which used to be called Vermilionville, uh, formerly known as the Manchac, Manchac Trading Post, even before that, uh, began to flourish around that time, 17, 1750s, mid 18th century. Um, they're, they're both in South Louisiana, not too far from each other. I'd say about, uh, I don't know, 20 miles apart, something like that. Um, one's a little sort of southeast of Lafayette and another one is pretty much directly north of Lafayette and uh, so as this area grew they obviously needed to establish a Catholic Church here because at that time it was pretty much one priest one father that was kind of traveling around and doing a lot of the you know masses and uh, you know baptisms and weddings and such like that so they want to establish something here since this was a growing area. I wonder if that's the Alexandra Mouton that we saw and we talked about at Vermilionville, the tour or the tour of Vermilionville I did last week, who was the governor of Louisiana. I wonder if that's the same one. So as for, like I said, the pre-mentioned Atacapa area churches, uh, there was a Father Michel Bernard Barrier, who's from Bordeaux, France. Uh, he actually escaped prosecution during the French Revolution. And he would travel via horseback in Piro uh, to serve mass, you know, marriages and baptisms, like I mentioned a while ago, in this area. You can imagine back then, there's no cars or, you know, anything else it's horseback or b rogue like they said i believe that's the rectory right there beautiful isn't it so whenever father barriere would come to the vermilionville area which is here the masses here at the time were held at jean mouton's house and we talked about jean mouton before if you watched the again if you watched the vermilionville vlog I did last week and he got lots he, a massive landowner he got lots and lots of land from the Spanish land grants at the time he he made his wealth off of that off of um, being a landowner here so masses were held I guess at his house look at this Beautiful, huh? Beautiful courtyard. And so, that was before any real Catholic churches were established, uh, structure-wise, building-wise. And so, uh, there's a cemetery here. It's a pretty big one, too. Can't even see the back of it from where we're at now, but... Very nice. Lots of above ground tombs as well as some in the ground. An 
always love these stately looking tombs that are above ground like that. So anyway, around the early 19th century, so you're talking about the early 1800s, uh, Vermilionville was nearing, I say Vermilionville, keep in mind that's, here's the back of the church by the way. This area was nearing about 4,000 uh, Catholic parishioners, um, basically, you know, uh, mostly Cajun uh, French, excuse me, French Catholics, not Cajun French, French Catholics. Um, and so Jean Mouton donated a lot of land in this area, where we are now, for St. John du Vermilionville, which is the original name of this church. Now, keep in mind, the structure you're seeing now is not the original structure, and I'm going to go into that in a second, but um, there were quite a few over the years. And just look at this place, look how beautiful it is. The architecture, the color. I mean, just kept up so well. The attention to detail is, is just so amazing. Every little detail on it. Oh, sorry, the umbrella made an appearance there. So yeah, over the years, there were many structures. Um, around 1850, uh, federal troops from the Civil War, during the Civil War, uh, federal troops occupied the tower. Again, not of this structure here, but the one that was here at the time. They used it as a signaling tower, essentially, during the war. That's pretty interesting, huh? And so, as you can imagine, any military troop or troops occupying a church or any, any place at that, you know, you know that's going to eventually take its toll on it. And a tropical storm that came through in 1871, it really did a number on the church. So, there was a major renovation and upgrade that needed to happen at that time afterwards. So that's what they decided to do. So uh, extensive remodeling efforts needed to be done after the tropical storm and the federal troops occupying the, the original structure of the church. And so around, I'd say about 1881-ish time frame, uh, that extensive renovation included things like electrical lights, uh, stained glass, and a brand new Italian marble, all altar excuse me which I imagine would be pretty um, pretty amazing and speaking of that tower again not this tower but just because I'm on the topic of towers look how high that is so pretty but anyway in the 1881 renovation or uh, you know remodeling effort uh, like I said, around 1881, there was actually a new church bell installed in the tower. And if you could believe it, that bell weighed about 3,000 pounds. Which, I don't know how they held that thing up. Yeah, thought it'd be a cool piece of information to add in there. 3,000 pound bell. wonder how much the one in uh, Philadelphia weighs. Anybody know that? I guess I could have Googled that, huh? <laughs> so, anyway, so that stood... From around that time, or I say the, the, the major remodeling happened around 1881. And then this structure, take one more glance at the tree. So we have this pretty awesome view of the uh, oak tree from here. I didn't want to pass this up while we were walking by it, but look at that. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on that. Massive. Almost like a redwood. Any of you guys ever seen a redwood tree before? So in 1916, this structure was built in 1916. 
and was uh, the front runner, front excuse me, front runner of it all, was a Monsignor William Joseph Turlings, who was from Holland. And Turlings, for all my local Cajuns here, we all know of Turlings High School, and that's who that's named after. And he was the one that spearheaded the. Uh, establishment of this structure that we're looking at right now in 1916. So another cool piece of information uh, is that I said right now it's called or now since 1918 it's been called St. John Cathedral and that's because in 1918 it was elevated to the status of cathedral when the Diocese of Lafayette was created. And of course, in 1918, uh, Vermilionville was, by now, it was called Lafayette. So it's been called uh, Cathedral since 1918. Pretty cool, huh? One more awesome look at the exterior of this. Monster of a beauty. And it really is this big in person. It's almost like the camera doesn't really capture quite how big this is. I don't know, I've said it about 80,000 times in this video already, but this place is just simply beautiful. I love these old Catholic churches. There's nothing like it. Okay, so there's people in here praying at the moment, so I'm not going to talk when we go in there, but I'm going to kind of go in there and, and pan around and uh, show you guys what it looks like, okay? There's all the bishops who have served here dating back to 1918. Essentially two years after the church was, or this structure was built. And this says uh, pastors of the 19th century dating back from 1821. Wow. All the way to the current one which is 2010 yeah so on my way out I ran into this it's right by the tree right in front of the tree it talks about John Mouton who we've by now talked about quite a few times 
donated the site where the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist Church now stands. As the town of 156 lots was being laid out, he also donated property for a parish courthouse with the request that the church and courthouse always face each other. Now, that's interesting. I never knew that. I never heard that. Dedicated to the Diocese of Lafayette Centennial Celebration, 1918 to 2018. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Um, good rainy day kind of thing. I thought the topic was kind of fitting. Uh, such a beautiful old, just, you know, stately church that stands here today. And it's, it's a hundred and, let's see, six, 16, huh? 1916 to 2022. So 106 years old now. You guys will learn I'm terrible at math, okay? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I, like I said, it's just, a, I like coming here every once in a while. And ever since I started doing these vlogs and stuff, I, I had this on my list and, um, I figured an old, an old rainy day Sunday would be a perfect time to do it. So, uh, I'll hang it up here and I'll say, uh, see you at the next one. Bye folks.